Back when I started teaching, I thought my Shakespeare unit was a thing of beauty. I had a different costume for each day. <laughs> That's my Porsche dress. And kids loved the daily soliloquy. My drama and literature double major was paying off in a big way, Dad. But ah, uh, all that glitters is not gold. All those brilliant observations I made, they were my brilliant observations, not my kids. I was doing the hard work. And my lectures, they were also really luxury. My kids weren't participating. They weren't doing rigorous thinking, which means they weren't learning. Not nearly as much as they could. So I made a change. I rewrote my lesson plan so they each incorporated at least one turn and talk. It's kids turning and talking in pairs a couple times during the lesson. Everyone's participating and two heads are better than one. So boom, more rigorous. But without the proper planning, you won't get talking. Or you won't get thinking. Here's what you do. Tell your neighbor what your answer is is not a rigorous thinking task. What you prompt them to talk about needs to ensure a give-and-take conversation where two people can legitimately share the cognitive workload. If you're asking them to, say, express and defend an opinion, or evaluate and improve an answer, that might cause them to reconsider their own ideas and potentially synthesize their own response with their partners. Students need to have a clear sense of why they're working together. So tell them. Perhaps one of them is teaching the other, or maybe they're collaborating to produce a more complete answer. Or if there's a rubric for the work they're doing, you could ask them to use it to give feedback to one another. Once a turn and talk is over, you have to ensure the conversation doesn't just evaporate into thin air. First of all, always move around and listen in during the turn and talk. Afterwards, call in a couple students to report what their partner said. And whenever possible, plan for that conversation to be part of a more complete thought that they'll produce later in the lesson or for their homework. <phone rings> Lastly, you need to message to kids who is talking, for how long, and when to switch. If they're naturally sitting in pairs in your room, boom, easy. But what if their partner is absent? You can't spend time sorting this stuff out every time you run a turn and talk. And of course, be sure to plan transition cues to indicate when to switch speakers. Bam! Renaissance timer! And that's it. If you're like I was, passionate, smart, low ratio, the turn and talk is for you. To turn, perchance to talk, I, there's the ratio.